We do want to turn to a completely different subject, and that's AI. You mentioned your software background, so I'm interested for your take on this. Obviously, AI has really entered the national discourse, especially since November 30th, when ChatGPT was officially launched. So under your presidency, if you are elected, how would you manage AI? Well, it's interesting. Uh, we had our North Dakota State uh, Cabinet offsite with the 24 leaders to lead our agencies. Uh, last week and uh, a big topic was how could we use the free AI tools that are available, the powerful tools, use that to deliver more efficient government. And it's it's hard for people to understand and comprehend, but if you said, if, if people in government feel like, hey, we're underpaid and overworked and we've got you know too much red tape or permitting takes you know 10 years and it should take one year, some of the tools that are available for free that are available right now have a way to actually increase the productivity for every business, but it certainly can be applied to make government more efficient. And we have 11 million jobs available in our country. We should not worry one second about the fact that this is going to eliminate some work because we're short of workers in this country. And if, and if AI can make it productive, then absolutely, let's have that. Let's figure out again, as part of our innovation, how do we have the most innovative, most productive economy in the world. Raising the output per capita is the way we raise and improve the lives of every American. And now we will, uh, and that tool is going to keep getting better and better. You want to embrace AI, but you, I do want you to repeat this. You do not think that AI will replace jobs. That's the number one question people ask me. Am I going to lose my job? You think no? Well, I think it's going to, I hope it, I hope people lose the 10 or 20% of their job that they hate doing. I mean, that's, you know, this, this could, you know, any job that is being done today can be done with, it's like anybody that goes to work, wouldn't you love to have an assistant that is, speaks 26 languages and can code that could, you know, sit next to you every day and be your co-pilot and, and help you uh, figure out how to do your job better. I mean, that's a, I mean, and, you know, write a draft for, for me because I've got a big meeting. I mean, it's like all of these things are like, it's like everybody's got the, you know, the most brilliant personal and right now it's, it's like literally it's free. So it's like there, this, the, the products that you're describing got to a hundred billion users faster than any product in the history of tech. Than the personal computer faster than the cell phone, uh, faster than the internet users. And so it's here and, and we just have to figure out a way to figure out how to apply, you know, how to apply it and how to make it work. But you pick any profession, we're short of doctors, we're short of nurses, we're short of teachers. We're short of all of these different professions, uh, you know, that all of those jobs could be free up some of the drug more patient time, give them more student time, give them more anything time. And I, I see across government, we can take all kinds of government jobs and make them more purposeful and more interesting by eliminating that the portion of every job that is that can be done through automation.